Debbie, you are the leader of Child Action Lanka. Tell us a little bit about it. When did you start? Uh, Child Action Lanka started in 2006, September 23rd. So we're going on our 13th year now. And we started in a place called Candy. And from there onwards, we've gone into eight different districts now, working with uh, 1,800 children. 1,800 children. These children are coming from the streets? Um, so depending on where, where the centers are, our headquarters is in a city called Candy, and Candy is street kids. When we say street, they are the kids who live on the streets, or if not, their parents work on the streets, so they spend a lot of their time on the streets. And um, if not, their family situation is such that if we didn't help them, they would soon be living on the street. Um, so those are the kind of kids we work with in Candy, but I'm today here at our Nuorelia Center. In Nuorelia we work with, um, I would say they are very underprivileged kids, but um, their parents live on, on different vegetable plots or in estates, uh, providing daily labor. And so if they work for the day, then they earn some money, and if they don't work due to weather conditions, uh, especially in a place like Nuorelia, uh, the weather is uh, the weather turns quite extreme. So sometimes it might be raining for days, which means then they won't have any work. Um, so that's the kind of kids we work with here. In the north and east, we work with war-affected kids, um, uh, and then in close to Colombo on the western province, we work with uh, suburban uh, kids who. Um, not exactly street, but they're slum kids, I'd say. They live in very, very poor conditions. And then uh, down south, we work back again with the rural, but kids who are in poverty because their parents are either into drugs, into prostitution, have no way of looking after the kids or don't really look after the kids. Um, so I think it's a variety of kids that we work with. But um, the, the common thing that they all have is they are in desperate need. Um, and not, not just in terms of finance, but they're also in terms, of, in terms of love, in terms of care, in terms of having somebody to be there for them. You mentioned the kids of this area, their parents have a job, they're going to work. But you also said, if there's bad weather, they cannot go to work because they work outside. In our countries, where we are from, like Australia or Europe, even when the weather is bad, we get our payment anyway. But this is not the case oh. here. No, it's not. You get paid only if you go to work. If you go to work. So a place like <laughs> Nuarelia, I mean, at this time, say December, January, February, it rains quite a lot and during that time then they'd hardly be able to work outside. Um, even the other times, I mean, especially this area, the weather is quite extreme, so it can be, you know, it, there might be, come April, it gets really hot, um, and then there's drought, so then there's no water to do any kind of gardening or anything like that, so then they won't have work either. When it comes to rainy times, it rains so much that then they can't work either. And when they don't work, they don't get paid. How do people manage their lives? That's where the problem lies. So because of that, they end up getting themselves into a lot of debt. Um, and then by the time they try to pay off one debt, it's time to take another debt, a loan to you know, live the next part of their life. So that is why we would like to you know, provide proper formal education for the children with the hope that then they can get themselves better jobs, um, be more skilled, more trained, um, have higher demand for their labor instead of just offering whatever comes by their way. Um, so that's the plan with these centers. Yeah. In your first answer, you mentioned the street kids in Candy. We have no idea how it is to live on the streets, especially as a kid. Do you have an idea? So it's, it's interesting because when I started out, um, street people were not something I noticed on the road. They, they were there and they didn't have a face nor did they have a name to me. They were just, I just passed them and went by. 
But now that we've been working with them, uh, it's interesting because now I know all of them by name. They know me by name. Uh, I have seen, I have seen their lives. I know their stories. I know what's going on in their world. It's a completely different situation. But I think the best way to explain it would be, um, if, for example, you know, somebody asked us to go and live on the street, we'd have no idea how to do that. It's the same for them. You ask them to go and live in a house, they've got no clue as to how to live in a house. They live on the streets and, you know, especially Kandy is a very touristy place. So lots of the tourists end up giving them some money. Um, and for that reason, they like to keep their children with them. So people feel sorry, give them some money. The money sadly doesn't go to the children. Uh, it goes to feed their habits of alcohol or drugs or anything like that. Um, and so, you know, the kids are back again, left to their own devices to do anything that they can or they would. Um, so children at a very young age, they start going and trying to trade things in town, trying to sell things. At the same time, they get caught to drug traffickers who might use children to go and sell their products. Um, or even, you know, for prostitution or anything like that. But these are kids who would be seated on the streets or, you know, in car parks. Um, in in garden parks, they they are around making mischief, uh, creating all the trouble in town. Very very cheeky bunch, um, and we actually had uh, the governor of Kandy at that point uh, say that the level of crime had gone down in the city because the children were not around in town to create mischief. They're actually at our centres now. So these are the kids. I mean, if you came into Kandy and Say, for example, a child action center was closed on that day. They'd be walking around the streets. They'd be all over. They'd be trying to, you know, come and ask you for money or they want your things or, you know, they'd be following you around. Um, and it, people feel sorry and would give them something. But, you know, the, the, the thing is, they're so used to trading. They're so used to living their life. For example, if somebody brought them a packet of food and gave, they look at, okay, I can eat this, yes, I'm hungry, but if I sell it, I can get something more out of it. So they would take that parcel of food and then sell it to somebody else. Then they'd use that money, maybe take it back home to their parents who needed the money or, you know, dad might be drinking out of that money. If the child didn't take money home, then, the, then they would get beaten by the parents. There's a lot of issues surrounding it. But I think for us, how we see it, is that the famous saying, you know, you give, you give a fish and you feed them for a day. You teach them to fish, you feed them for a life. And for us, I think we feel like that's what we want to do. We want to teach them to be empowered, to live their life. So educate them. And when you say educate, not just to read and write, not just, not just mathematics and English, but basically how to live their life, whether it is life skills, whether it is computer studies, whether it is vocational training, whether it's how to make decisions, how to do business planning, um, how, to, how to basically survive in the world one day without, without a center. Um, that's, that's where we are getting our kids towards. Can you give us an example? Let's say you take a child off the streets in Kandy. What would be the next step for that child? So I think we've been very privileged and something I always tell our staff in Kandy is uh, we've had the honor of being on the front row of their lives to see their lives change. And over the last 13 years, we've seen quite a number of lives actually, you know, they've been through the whole cycle of Child Action Lanka and their life has been changed. Um, so in terms of a good example, I think what we do is, so we have our, we have our baby centers, we also have our preschools. And uh, we also have um, after-school care for kids. And so when they've come through the whole system of, you know, they've passed the preschool, then they've gone into main school. When they go to main school, most kids don't get taught because um, the school teachers feel like, you know, we shouldn't mess with their karma. So, you know, they're meant to be suffering like this, so we don't need to help them. So then they don't get taught. So we have to teach them at our centers. But once they pass the exams, then what we do is we look to see what, what this child would really want to do. And I always tell the bigger kids, I said, look, 
I understand you were not given an opportunity at birth, but here's your second chance in life. So dream big, whatever it is you want to do. I believe God's favor is on these kids to date we've been able to make their dreams come true. Some of them want to go into higher education. If they want to go into higher education, we've been able to find sponsors, put them through higher education. Some of them end up going in for working somewhere, and so we've got kids working both locally and overseas. Um, some of them, they want to start their own business, so we've got kids in and around Candy and a few other cities doing their own businesses now. We've been able to link them up with mentors, so there'll be somebody who's able to guide them and advise them along the way. Um, some of them, they want, to, uh, they want to go into more creativity, arts, more into those fields. And in Sri Lanka, it's not a field that's really accepted as a, a profession. People kind of think, oh, you know, if you go into arts, uh, it's basically for those who, you know, are not very smart. But I like encouraging kids to go into the performance part of things as well. So we've got kids who've gone into performance, who've gone into theatre, who've gone into music. Um, and I think the centres always remain a safe place and a home for them. So we've got 23-year-olds, 24-year-olds, you know, they're out there in the world now. Uh, some of them still studying in university or in college or doing a course or working. And for them, this is home. So they keep coming back and they say, oh, I came to see you and I came to see the others and they might come have a meal with us, sit down, we hear about their life, what's going on. Um, and most of them actually keep in touch with us, so it's really nice. Yeah. When we started out, we, we were trying to be God to everybody and do everything. But as time has gone by, we realized we needed to maybe focus on a few things and do them really, really well. So, for, so what Child Action Lakhat does now is we focus on education, we focus on health and nutrition, and we focus on child protection. Um, about 90% of the kids that we work with end up being you know, abused uh, and come from varied walks of life. And so because of that, child protection plays a very, very important role for them. Creating uh, awareness on child rights, creating awareness for parents on what is uh, about parenting and actually taking care of their kids, um, creating awareness for the kids themselves as to what is wrong and what, what should not be happening for them. A lot of the things that we consider wrong are pretty normal to them because they've grown up experience, experiencing you know, abuse, you know, whether it's physical, whether it's sexual, whether it's verbal, whether it's mental. It's been a normal part of their life and they don't expect any different and just t giving them that sense, you know, this should not be happening to you. And if it does happen, this is what you should be doing. Um, or even standing up on behalf of them, sometimes going into the co going to courts, going to the police station, because if they went on their own, went with their parents, they wouldn't be taken notice of. But when, an when, when they know there is an organization backing them up, it becomes a little more serious and a little more accepted. So this is something we do, standing on behalf of these people. And I like to say that we create a face and a name for a faceless, nameless community that people generally don't have a second thought about. Um, the other thing that we do is health and nutrition. But I would say, you know, the feeding programs are great, but I think the health part is something that we really struggle with. Um, Health care is something that is freely offered in the country, but the problem being that because this community is way down there in the social, uh, social class system, um, very often what happens is when they go to the doctors, they don't get treated or a doctor can't be bothered to look at them. And so because of that, they suffer with a lot of illnesses that can easily be cured with just a little bit of medicine. And this is something that we are looking at in the future that we might be able to improve in our communities. What the viewers of the video cannot observe is the smelling here. It's smelling very, very good here at the moment. <laughs> and I had a chance to take a look into the kitchen. What do you feed to the children? And do you feed them every day? Yes. So thanks to Feed the Hungry and the amazing support that's been happening for years and years and years, uh, we've been able to feed um, most of our centers. And um, so what we do is in the mornings we give the kids breakfast. 
in the afternoons we give them lunch which is a full meal we make sure that the food is really nutritious and um, well balanced in sri lanka our staple diet is rice and curry so uh, it's lots of rice and curry uh, but uh, so they get uh, you know they might get some meat um, vegetables green leaves the whole works of it along with rice and then um, they also get an evening snack before they go off um, so it might be a glass of milk with some cookies or something like that um, and then in candy what we do is because most of the kids um, you know who don't have a meal for the night what we end up doing is we pack them some dinner and send so no kid goes away hungry oh, that's good. That's so thank good. you feed the hungry you made that possible